just come to the conclusion, first of all, that the subject is not the body-mind. Yes. First, that it's not the body. And then ultimately, as we observe our thoughts and feelings and sensations and all that, if I'm observing it, it can't be me. And then you come to this conclusion, which sounds very simple, that as consciousness, we can't be limited by definition because if we could see the boundary of consciousness, it would then be observable and therefore could not be us because we are observing. Now, the implication of what you're saying here is the thing that maybe doesn't begin to sink in until you really start to experientially look at this. This is the point where maybe what we were talking about before, that there's an intellectual understanding. You can take this so far in your thinking and you can say, okay, consciousness is not limited. But my experience of myself, my feeling experience of myself and life, sure feels like I'm sitting inside this body dealing with problems that are appearing all around me at all times. So what's going on? If, if we arrive at the conclusion that we've, that we've just arrived at, and we're sure that we've arrived at this conclusion that consciousness is undoubtedly present and yet not limited or, or personal, if we've arrived at that through our own experience, as we have, and not just bought the idea because we've heard it already, but if we really see clearly from our own experience that's the case, we can then experiment with our experience to see how this consciousness, or even if this consciousness, is affected by the changing nature of appearances. Before you jump on that, I just want to say your mind goes very quickly and you've assumed part of this this line of reasoning that I'm not so sure sinks in so quickly to people, which is to say, consciousness is not limited, I get it. Consciousness is not personal. It would have to flow from that. Now that's the place that I think that it starts to become like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. I may be consciousness, I may be ephemeral, I may be naumana, I may be all this stuff, but it's still me. Yes. Okay? And so we get this defensive ownership quality feeling to what's going on. So let's look at that. Why the fact that consciousness right. is not limited means also that it's not personal. Because by personal we mean belonging to the person. And that which defines the person is this particular body and this particular mind, and the mind being a collection of thoughts and memories and desires. And so how can we establish in our experience that consciousness is independent. We've established in our experience that consciousness is what we are. So now, look, let's leave the, the world on one side right. for a moment and just look at the, the relationship between the body and the mind and this knowing presence, I, consciousness. Mm -hmm. And we see, for instance, that there are many times during the day when the body and the mind are not present as an experience. And yet, I, this consciousness, doesn't disappear. For instance, in a dream, the mind is present, but the body is simply not present. Right. Of course, I know the objection to that is, is that, oh, well, the body was actually, it was there, it was lying in the bed because so-and-so saw it. But we're just sticking, just with experience. The body is not experienced. And by the body, we mean visual perceptions if our eyes are open and bodily sensations. Neither of these are present in a dream. So we have the direct experience on a regular basis that I remain as I am, consciousness remains as it is, and that the, what we call the body comes and goes. Consciousness itself is not affected in any way by the coming and the going of the body. We also experience moments when the mind is not present, when, for instance, there are no thoughts present, or when there are no images, our experience in that moment may consist of sense perceptions or bodily sensations. There may be no thinking, there may be no mental imagery going on. Exactly the same is true of that state, that consciousness remains exactly as it always is. Right. So the appearance and disappearance thoughts and images, which we call the mind, and bodily sensations, 
which we call the body, they come and go to this consciousness. They come and go in the same way that objects come and go in this room. Mm -hmm. Now, it's only when consciousness identifies itself, by which I mean when consciousness thinks and feels, I am this little sensation, mm -hmm. or this cluster of sensations, or this group of thoughts, that consciousness seems to undergo the changes that the body and the mind undergo. And therefore, when the body and mind disappear, consciousness, because it's welded itself, it's so, so completely identified itself with the body-mind, it feels that it, that it, it goes wherever the body-mind goes. That is right. not true any right. more than the space in this room moves or changes when the furniture moves right. and changes. The space was here before this room was full of furniture. In fact, the space was here before the house was built. The house was built, the space remained exactly the same. It appeared to take the shape of the room, but when the house is taken down one day, the space will remain exactly as it always is. And it will become obvious then that it was always there and that it never took the shape of the room. It appeared right. to take the shape of the right. room. Exactly the same thing, when the furniture comes in, what happens to the space? Absolutely nothing. It just remains as it is. Like consciousness, it accommodates everything that appears. It says yes, 100% to everything. It embraces everything. But it is at the same time totally unaffected by it. The image that is often used is, is the mirror. Whatever appears in the mirror, it right. doesn't matter whether it's the most beautiful object mm -hmm. or the most ugly object, it's mm -hmm. completely independent. Those differences don't make any difference to consciousness at all, and we can experiment with our experience. For instance, take a very pleasant, positive thought, uh, a beautiful thought, a positive thought. Ask yourself, is consciousness present? Of course consciousness is present, it's there to witness this thought. Now, now take the, the meanest, hideous thought you can think of, and does that which is aware of this evil thought does it change no. at all? No, it's completely independent. Right. right. The experience that what we are is this knowing presence is so close to us, is so obvious, it's so intimately and obviously right. what we are, and it is also so, so obviously independent of the changes, the comings and goings of the body and the mind and the world. It's so simple that we've just not noticed it, and that what we are is this this knowing presence that is always in the same, always in the same place, it's always in the same condition. It's always only itself, just like the space in this room or the mirror. It's always itself, independent of the coming and going.